pictures from the Hayata filters um, as well as the row cone filter and uh, no filter whatsoever on the camera lens. Um, so if you guys haven't seen the previous video where I kind of do a review of the Hayata filters and talk a little bit about ND filters and what they do, um, I will pop up a link over here over top this histogram and you guys can go check that out. Um, if you've already seen it, then well, you're diving right in from the previous video and we're gonna kind of go over the difference um, in, in photos. Um, so mainly what I'm going to do is, as you notice, I have quite a few different photos down here. We got two sets. I took nine photos of, of each uh, picture um, using different filters, using um, different uh, densities of filters, and then using no filter whatsoever. And we're gonna kind of break it down and talk about it a little bit. And uh, you guys may not be able to see a huge difference um, in between filters, but um, I think that there's definitely a, a slight difference. And uh, that does mean a lot. And again, the ND filter is great for, for allowing you to get shots where you need a really low shutter speed, but it's too bright when you drop your shutter speed down that low. So let's dive right into it. Um, so this first filter, or this first picture was taken with the uh, Ronico uh, filter, uh, 77 millimeter, and it was taken with an, uh, a shutter speed of 80, an ISO of 100, and an f-stop of 10. And we can even zoom in a little bit because we're gonna kinda wanna take a look at at this as well as uh, as the next one. So the next shot was taken with the Hayata uh, 0 0.98x filter um, with the same exact settings, um, the 80 shutter speed, ISO 100, and f-stop 10. So we can bounce back and forth a little bit. And uh, you guys might see a slight difference. Um, in my opinion, the Hayata filter, even though it is darker, looks to be a tad bit sharper to me. Um, and then we're gonna move on to our next photo. Um, and in this photo, it was taken with the Hayata filter 0.98X as well. What I did though is I changed the ISO to 400. So it was 80 shutter speed, a 400 ISO, and a 10 f-stop. To get the filter similar to uh, to the original Ronico filter. So there's what that looks like. And then when I tried to match the lighting, um, I don't know if you guys again see a big difference, but to me it's very slight, but it is there. So, so this photo right here um, was the one that was the altered settings to get the lighting similar to the Ronico filter. Um, so this next shot is gonna be dark as well, but we switched filters again. Um, we use the Hyunda uh, 1.864x filter. And so we're going to do the same thing. You're going to see that there's going to be a, a, a drop in, in lighting exposure. And that's really dark. Um, so that's, that's a, uh, a huge difference in lighting by just putting on one filter using the same settings, which was a shutter of 80, ISO of 400, and then the f-stop of 10. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on over to the next photo. I'm using, again, the same filter, the 1.864X ND filter. And we had to change some settings to get the lighting similar. So what we had to do is we had to drop our shutter speed from 80 to 25. We kept our ISO the same at 400. And then we had to drop our f-stop from 10 to 3.5 to match up with to get a similar lighting, it's still a little bit brighter on this shot, to get a similar lighting as the uh, 8X 0.9 ND filter. Um, then we can go all the way back to the Ronico. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on and take out these darker pictures here that we've already looked at, because there's not much information we can really get out of them. And now this way we can see what the three different filters look like. And we're gonna sh we go through, and we'll start with the Ronico and we'll work our way up. Um, Again, this, this photo was taken at an 80, 100, and 10. Um, so 80 shutter, 100 ISO, 10 f-stop. This shot was taking um, a 25 shutter, a 400 ISO, and a, oh my bad, a 80 shutter, 400 ISO, and a 10 f-stop. And then we're going over to the last one, which is the 1.864X ND filter by Hoeda. And it was done at 25 shutter, ISO 400 and an f-stop of 3.5. So 
So now we're going to be jumping over to the darkest um, ND filter that I have, which is the ND 3.0 1000X. And it's going to get really dark on this shot. Well, not really dark, but it's going to be darker, as you can see. Um, again, now that you guys have seen that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and remove it, and we're going to jump over to the one with the 1000X ND 3.0 filter. Um, Hyota and uh, as you guys can see it's uh, the, the colors are pretty similar okay so um, we're gonna jump back over to this one um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it um, so if you notice you've got uh, if you jump between these two shots the shot is, is considerably sharper than this shot and I'm going to explain why we have a difference of sharpness once we went to the 3.0 ND filter. Um, so this shot was taken with a shutter speed of 8, an ISO of 800, and an f-stop of 3.5. It was not a very bright day out that day, so we really weren't able to, uh, to really keep our shutter speed higher and our ISO lower. Um, so what happens here is, well, we jumped, we, we start out at a shutter of 100, and we're all the way up to a shutter of 800 now. So that's gonna cause more noise. Um, as well, we have taken our shutter speed as that was at 80, and we dropped our shutter speed down to eight. So therefore the tripod needs to be even steadier to capture that shot, which again, uh, it's it looks to me like this shot uh, is a tad, tad, tad bit. Uh, I might've hit the tripod or I knocked it, but um, I was using a shutter release. So something could have happened that caused it to blur a little bit. Um, it, this shot does look a tiny bit blurry, but if you notice, the noise is really bad. So if we jump all the way back to the first shot, you're going to notice how much cleaner the noise is right here versus here. As you can probably see, there's definitely a difference in noise at this closeness. Um, but if we go back to the, uh, the one zero point nine eight x which is going to be this one, you're going to notice the noise really isn't that bad jumping from 100 to 400, um, it's still gonna have just as sharp of a, a, as a shot as the 100 ISO. And this is why I like the high of filters is because even at a higher ISO, um, I just feel like the glass itself is just is so much better quality than the Ronico. Again, like I said in my previous movie or video, um, the, the review video of the high filter set, um, the one things I really kind of harped on was you're not going to go out and buy really cheap glass for your lens or for your camera body. Um, if you can help it, you want to go on and get the higher end glass, the L lenses or, or the high Nikon, you know, they're nicer higher end lenses versus the cheaper glass because the quality is going to be better. So let's jump all the way down to our fifth picture, our seventh, I should say. Um, and we've actually looked at this. So now we're going to jump all the way down to no filter. Um, and well, we don't want to jump too far here. We'll bring that back up over here with the rest of them. Um, so this was, uh, again, this picture right here. You got the noise. You guys probably noticed it by now. It's the noise. got the 800 ISO. So we switched to a ND filter, or no ND at all. And uh, we have two of them right here. So there's no filter on the lens whatsoever. We're just using a 10 to 22 millimeter lens. And uh, we'll go over each setting, what each setting was. So in this picture, um, they, in, the shutter was at 160, ISO of 100, and an f-stop of 9. In the next picture, we just bring up the shutter from 160 to 250, and the ISO stays at 109 for the f-stop. So um, mainly you just have a shutter difference, which you're not going to, all you really get is a lighting difference. You're not going to get any kind of other differences as far as quality is concerned. Um, again, uh, this is probably the worst looking shot, but this is also the 1000X 3.0 ND filter that forced me to use a really high ISO that I did not want to. Um, and I'm shooting with the Canon T3i um, on all these pictures. So, so yeah, there's definitely, uh, definitely a difference. Um, I wish it was a brighter day so I could have shown you what the 1000X can really do and how, how low I could have gotten my shutter speed, which would have been nice. And we'll probably do that down the line. I'll do some kind of video. So now we're going to jump right into our second set of photos um, that I took. And uh, 
and we start out doing the uh, no, this is a, this has no uh, filter on it whatsoever. Then we'll do the Ronoco filters, and then the high other filters will be after that. Um, and these shots aren't as dark. I tried to mask them up a little bit more, but still want to show you guys a little bit different. So in this shot right here, um, the there is no ND filter on my 10 to 22 millimeter um, lens as well. We're shooting at the Canon T3i. So the shutter's at uh, 250. ISO's at 100 and then the f-stops at 11 in this shot. So uh, let's see if we can. We'll probably go with something like this. We'll go with a shot like this. Kind of has a nice close shot. So you guys might be, even though this is blurry because I was really shooting back, my depth of field was set closer than further away. Um, so we'll kind of do that. So I feel like we'll be able to get more information this way as we're looking at the pictures. So uh, I kept the settings the same, 250 shutter, 100 ISO. Um, 11 f-stop for uh, the Ronoco filter um, and we'll kind of jump back and forth and I don't know if you guys can really notice it much but there's definitely more noise um, in this shot than there is in this shot um, not a lot more but there's definitely some more noise uh, that I feel like is caused by the Ronoco filter you know the cheaper the cheaper filter um, and then the next shot is where I tried to match the lighting. So we'll go on and kill the darker shot here. Um, so this is where I tried to match the lighting. And uh, the settings on that was an 80 shutter speed, a 100 ISO, and 11 f-stop. Um, and there's not a huge difference. Um, there's a, bit, a little bit of a lighting difference because it wasn't dead on. Um, but I have to admit that I, I do think that in this circumstances, I really don't want to use a, uh, a filter if I have to use a cheaper filter like this one because to me this just looks a little bit cleaner without a filter than with a filter. So from there uh, we jumped right into the 0.98x ND filter by Hayata. Um, we kept the same settings for the first shot which was an 80 shutter, an ISO of 100 and an f-stop of 11. And of course you're going to see that it's going to be a little bit darker. And uh, there really isn't a lot of difference when it's darker. Um, we need to, it needs to be brightened up or we need to move to the more bright uh, shot, which is going to be our next shot where I tried to match the, the lighting. So I'm going to go on and kill this darker shot here. Now you guys have kind of seen the difference. And we'll bring this up so that we can get a good look. Okay, so this shot uh, was done um, at a shutter of 20, an ISO of 100, and an f stop of 11. So again, Rono filter, and we don't have a huge difference. Um, if you want to look at uh, these spots right here, you're going to notice a difference, some lighting, um, and, and a little bit's lighting. But if you, I don't know if you guys can tell the difference. Um, to me, there's there's definitely this is blurrier and it doesn't look as clean as as this does when I switch back over here. To me, this is this is cleaner. Um, and we're looking right here at the pipe and we'll scroll back out so you guys can see what we're looking at. So we're looking on up here and uh, to me this is just a cleaner look than the Ronoco filter, Ronoco filter. And I'm sorry, I'm probably constantly butchering that. It just looks cleaner to me. Um, so moving on, now we're going to move over to the Hoyada um, ND filter 1.8 64x and we're not going to keep the same settings going into the next picture. Um, what we do is we're dropping the shutter all the way down to 13, ISO 100, and an f-stop of 5. Um, and as you can see, uh, the f-stop got brought down to 13, or the shutter got dropped down to 13, ISO 100, and f-stop of 5.0. And there is definitely a difference in the look of the shot. Um, if you notice, this is going to be more blurry right here, and that could have been because it um, has nothing to do with the filter, of course. Um, I lower shutter speed, so I could have tapped the tripod when I shouldn't have and caused a little bit of movement. If you, if you notice, there's definitely movement blur right here. It's very seldom, but I definitely did cause that, um, where there is no movement blur here. As well, we're shooting at a, uh, a shutter of 20 instead of a shutter of 13, which is going to be different. So we could, if we wanted to, still get a good look, um, we could try to find them. So something like this, see how much movement there is in this shot if we bring it down 
here. And they're probably the movement probably is not going to be so bad. So, um, and you can see the difference in those two shots. Um, so the next shot is going to still be the ND 1.864X Hyota filter. Um, it's a shutter of six, an ISO of 100, and an f-stop of five. So we drop the shutter down even more, and it's going to be even even brighter. Um, and we'll go back up to the spigot here, and we'll see if I was able to keep the shot a little steadier. No. Um, as well, uh, bringing the f-stop down to five instead of 11 in the previous um, shots, you're going to get a larger depth of field. Um, and this is a forward or front depth of field versus a, 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 a back depth of field. Um, we're going for a forward, not a not a longer, you know, behind depth of field. Um, so that's also, also going to change the shot a little bit. Um, and then we jump over to the final two pictures, which are done with the uh, Hayata ND 3.0 1000X filter. Um, both, of this, both of these next two pictures were done with a shutter of six and, uh, and an f-stop of five. The difference in these two pictures is going to be ISO. So we're going to look, if you notice, I mean, you guys can probably tell that right now, we are grainy at 800 ISO on the Canon T3i. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no getting around it. It's not so bad down here, but it's very apparent right here in this, in this spigot. Um, so we're going to move over, and that brings our, our down. So our ISO now is 400, um, still a 5F stop and a 6 shutter. And um, the ISO is a little bit better, but it's not a lot better. And so hopefully that helps you guys kind of understand uh, a little bit about indie filters over these two videos as well. as I don't know if you guys see a huge difference. Um, professional photographers that are probably watching this do see a slight difference. And, uh, and I really like the Hoeta filters. I think they're really good. Um, like I said, they're a little pricey. But they are the cheapest professional filter that I've come across that you can buy. Now, I've tried all, those, all the different filters out there. I've tried a bunch of cheap filters. And I've messed. I've, I've done some stuff with uh, higher end filters uh, working for people in the past. So I didn't really have a chance to test them out. Um, but again, you want that higher quality glass, and I think Hoeta does make a, a good quality product. Um, again, they, they're not paying me to say this. Is my personal uh, personal opinion here. So uh, you guys have a great day. Uh, check us out on Facebook at David D Images, Twitter at Media Unlock, and of course MediaUnlock.net, our website. And there'll be all those links down below as well as a link to Amazon if you guys are interested in purchasing a filter. It does help me um, anytime anything is purchased through my Amazon links. Um, it helps this uh, YouTube channel keep on keeping on. So have a great one and we'll catch you next time.